Hello, my name is Kurt Showell, and today I'm going to talk to you about bonds, how to value them, how they look on the statement of financial position, and also the journal entry you do to record interest expense for a bond. So the first thing you have to figure out is why are we even talking about this? Well, bonds are an important way in which companies raise money. They bas a company has basically three ways to raise money, from their operation, in other words, whatever it is that they, they sell, uh, from equity financing, and that basically is issuing shares to shareholders, and that will generate cash, or from debt financing, and basically that's where you start uh, taking out loans, or in this case, bonds. We issue bonds, so someone will give us money in order to, so that they'll receive back some coupon payments and a lump sum in the future. So what's a bond? What's well, a debt for the company? It's their agreement to pay the purchaser a lump sum at some point in the future, and also to pay a series of payments at some at uh, intervals through in the future. So each bond has a number of characteristics. The first is the principal, the bond principal, which is the face value of the bond. It's the amount that's going to be paid back when the bond matures. In other words, at the very end of the bond. The coupon is the basically the amount of money you're going to get on a periodic basis. So if it's a regular payment, if it's an annual payment, you get it once a year. If it's a semi-annual payment, you get it twice a year quarterly payment four times a year. And that coupon is based on the coupon rate of the bond. And then you have the market rate. The market rate is very important. At the time you go to issue a bond, the purchasers are going to look and say, what else can I get in the market in terms of my investments? If And the rate could be higher or lower than your bond, or it could be the same. So basically, it's the rate in the market. Now, when we want to value these bonds, those different rates are going to be very important. We basically have bonds at par, which is when the coupon rate is the same as the market rate. We have a bond at a discount, which is when the coupon rate is less than the market rate, and a bond at a premium, which is when the coupon rate is more than the market rate. And just to discuss one of them, when you think about a discount, if the coupon rate is 5%, but the market rate is 6%, why would you buy a bond at face value when you can put your money elsewhere and get a bigger um, interest rate? So what we do is we discount that bond so that we basically equal the market rate. And that's really the kind of whole main concept when you look at bonds from an accounting perspective. So first, what's a bond at par? Well, there's some key information when you take a look at any bond. The face value, in this case, it's $100,000. The coupon rate, our bond is a 5% bond. The market rate, the market's yielding 5% right now. The number of years to maturity is three. In this case, we have a semi-annual payment frequency. And what that means is if you have a three-year bond that pays coupons twice a year, we're going to have six payments. In other words, three times two. So how do we value this bond at par? First thing I always do is create a spreadsheet that has all the important information I need at the top. You see the face value, the coupon rate, the market rate. Notice both the coupon and market rate. Anytime they're expressed in a question in accounting, they're going to be whatever the percentage is per year. Right? Our coupon frequency is semi-annual, like I said, and the years to maturity is three. Well, what that means when you see semi-annual, if we have six payments, as you'll see in the timeline below, it also means that we only get half the interest rate. Semi-annual, take the, the market rate, divide by two. All right, so let's take a look at our timeline down there. We're going to use that coupon rate, so 5% divided by two because it's done semi-annually, to come up with a semi-annual payment, which you see there, $2,500 every six months. And then we have our lump sum payment that occurs at the end of the sixth period or the end of three years, which is $100,000. So to value that bond, we have to go to present value concepts. I'm not going to try and explain present value to you, but the present value of that principal payment, in other words, $100,000 six periods from now, is worth $86,000. The present value of those semi-annual payments is worth $13,770, hence the value of the bond is $100,000. So the key things to remember, the coupon rate is what you use in the timeline to determine the regular payment, in this case a semi-annual one, and the market rate is the rate you use to discount your cash flows. So let's take a look at the schedule, how this thing really, uh, how it all kind of happens. So let's say, assume we issued the bond on the 1st of January. The carrying amount's $100,000. The first payment happens on June the 30th. We pay $2,500. The interest expense is also $2,500. Not surprising. There is no amortization, and there is no premium or discount. All right, so in this case, when it's at par, you can see the payment and the interest expense are exactly the same. So how does that look on the statement of financial position? 
you're only going to have one line that says bond payable for the carrying amount of the bond. And then each time you record interest, you're going to record the interest expense, which is a debit to your expense account, and then the cash payment, the interest payment will be the same, in this case $2,500. So pretty simple when it's at par. Now when it's at a discount, the only change here is take a look at the market rate. Now the market rate is 6%, where the coupon rate is 5%. Right? That's the only change in this example. So we go back to our spreadsheet here, put all the numbers in, notice the market rate is 6%. So we still have six periods, in other words, three-year bond, semi-annual payment, which means six payments. The principal payment is still $1,000. Notice that the semi-annual payment, which is based on the coupon, is still $2,500. Nothing has changed. The only difference is the present value of these numbers because we're using a 6% discount rate, or in this case, 3% because of semi-annual payments. Hence, that's where the change happens, is in the present value. So when you have a bond where the market rate is 6% and the coupon rate is 5%, notice that the bond value, when you put the present value of the principal payment and the, and the semi-annual payments, you add them together, you actually have a value that is slightly less than the $100,000 of the original bond. So how's that going to look? We do up our schedule again. The carrying amount for the bond is going to be $100,000 minus this discount of $2,709 on the day that it's issued. The interest payment, in other words, the amount that's going to be paid to the person who bought the bond, doesn't change. It's all based on 5% divided by 2 times the $100,000. That person still gets $2,500 every six months. The interest expense, in this case, we're using the effective interest rate, which is the market rate, 6% divided by 2, makes it 3% times the carrying amount. And then this bond amortization is basically the difference between the interest expense and the interest payment. And you'll notice here what I did is the interest payment minus the interest expense. So you have the amortization is going to go down. All right, so you'll notice that the discount originally was $2,709. After the first payment, it actually, the um, discount gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So each time you make a payment, the discount on the bond gets smaller until the final day of maturity, it gets to zero. So when you take a look at the line here in the middle of the slide, it says the statement of financial position, that's how the bond would look on the day that it's actually issued. The bond payable is 100,000, the discount is the amount from the discount column of 2709, and the carrying value of the bond is the difference between the two. So on 30th of June, the bond payable is still the same, the discount is actually slightly smaller, hence the carrying value is getting closer to $100,000. Each time you make a payment, the carrying value of the bond will get closer to $100,000 such that on December the 31st, 2017, the actual carrying of the value of the bond will be exactly $100,000, which is what you will pay the individual. So how do you record interest expense then? Straightforward, same entries, except this time you have one extra line. The interest expense comes right off the column, which is the market rate again, times the carrying amount. The cash payment, always the same, $2,500. And the discount on the bond payable, in other words, how you're going to amortize that discount, you're going to reduce the discount by the difference between the interest expense and the interest payable. Let's take a look at a premium. Same basic idea, except now the market rate is less than the coupon rate, 4% instead of the coupon rate of 5%. We do the exact same schedule. Again, notice the payments, the semi-annual payment remains $2,500. The lump sum payment is still $100,000. But now we use that 4% in the market rate to discount our bond. All right? Remember, it's semi-annual, so we would have used a 2% discount rate. Using your present value tables or the formulas in Excel, you end up with a bond value of just slightly over $100,000, $102,801. Let's build our schedule. So the original value of the bond is $100,000. Now we have a, a premium of $2,801, which means the carrying value on the day it's issued is $102,801. And you can see that on the statement of financial position in the middle of the slide. And each time we make a payment, the interest payment is the same. 5% divided by 2, 2.5% 2 times $100,000. Interest expense is the 4% in the market rate divided by 2 times the carrying amount. And you'll see that there is slightly is going to be less than the interest payment. Hence, the bond premium is going to slowly decrease by those amounts. And you can see it happening in the schedule such that at the very end, the carrying amount for the bond will actually reduce from $102,801 all the way down to the day it's due to $100,000.
each time you record interest uh, expense for a bond that's at a premium, the interest expense basically comes from the chart. Now you're gonna have a debit for bond, um, bond, the premium on the bond payable, and the cash payment is always going to be $2,500.